Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and we are back trying to solve the problems of my interplanetary lander. And uh, I have undergone a complete redesign here, as you see. Now, gone is the giant engine, gone is the two stage engines. Instead, I've got two aero spikes tacked onto the side and a single three meter engine on the bottom. Now, the thing about aero spikes is they are wondrously efficient, they're low mass, they, um, you know, relatively light as well, and you know they're they're just great in every way. But you cannot mount anything directly underneath it, so you can't stage with them. So you have to stick them on the side or the last stage, and that's what I've done here. And so I'm taking advantage of their extra high thrust in the atmosphere to uh, deliver me to orbit. And you see, this thing is going to launch with uh, only basically one large and one small fuel tank, and those tiny, tiny fuel tanks that are. Uh, on the on the, I'm using to mount the the aero spikes on. Um, I've left that single big engine on the back for um, for a little bit of uh, steering through the gimballing. And uh, the nice thing is, in theory, if we uh, just tack extra tanks onto the side, we can use the aero spikes for the interplanetary transfer because they get you know 390 specific impulse, which is just about the best in the game. And so, you know, we're just demonstrating here. There goes the, the first stage. You see how we just drop that directly off the bottom and leave those tanks on the top, those rockets on the top. We're just demonstrating that this uh, design will actually get into orbit. And now, of course, the big problem that we've been facing is how to put this onto the surface with enough fuel to get back into orbit without destroying it. Now, uh, this actual design right now has a problem. If you then try to land this, the the nose will of course flip face down so this capsule has to be rescued in orbit i'm not going to do that for this video because you've we've seen a million in orbit rescues but yeah there we go burning up to circularize the orbit and uh, you can see with it only you know one large and one small three meter tank this thing is perfectly capable of putting a three-man capsule into orbit now let us look at how we land it now of course um I've been making a few of these videos and I'll bet you, since I make all these at once and uh, I post them all later, um, I'll bet you that there is a whole bunch of you that have suggested improvements on how to fix this thing, on how to fix the previous lander. So now's the moment of truth. Now's when you're going to find out whether this uh, is good or whether your ideas were great or not. So yeah, first idea is uh, why not just slap a ton of parachutes on it? So we're descending through the atmosphere at a kilometer per second, 20 kilometers up, and we have about, I don't know, 18 parachutes on that. That's eight, yeah. That is a lot of parachutes. And I've tried to put the make the number of parachutes on each major section roughly proportional to the mass of that section so that the force, when they all fire, when they all catch, should be distributed roughly evenly throughout it. And you see I'm just trying to get some control back uh, even with the parachutes pulling on it, it still wants to go nose down. The, of course, um, and you notice also the vehicle mass is down to 42 tons, which uh, is about 30 tons less than the previous one. That is a huge saving. Uh, really, this, this wins in so many ways right now. But can it land? Well, we're getting down. Let's, we, can't, we can't turn it without the chutes being open, but let's try see what happens when the chutes open. Will it stay together? No, it won't. So yeah, more shoots uh, may be possible, but uh, it just seems to be a lot of effort to balance it, to make everything work together. Now, uh, another idea I came up with was that I observed that the shoots um, are opening when the, power, the vehicle velocity is about 136 meters per second. So I thought, Maybe there's a way to slow things down prior to that. Now, the chutes won't fire early, so we have to get smart. We have to actually get active. So what I did was uh, I mounted a couple of solid rocket boosters backwards on this vehicle. And the reason I'm using solid rocket boosters is because they are independent of the throttle. I can fire these and uh, work the throttle independently. There's no staging issues with trying to turn thrusters on in different directions. So I'm just going to wait until I get relatively close to the ground and then fire these. Hopefully that will bring me to a stop. And then 
I fire the parachutes and when they open properly, I should be going slowly enough that the, perhaps they don't tear the vehicle apart. There we go, man. This is hard on the pilots, no doubt. But you can see we're slowing down our vertical. It's not quite enough, I think, to offset our actual vertical velocity. But you see that it's certainly dropping. We're at minus 30 meters per second, minus, tw minus 23 meters per second. So there, drop the parachutes out. Now, you see all I've got is a couple of small parachutes this time. And the idea being that they will give me enough force to flip it around. Look at that. Beautiful. So now all we need to do is land this thing. So pop out those legs. And I'm just going to wait until I'm really close to the ground and tell it to land. Beautiful. Mostly. Stay up straight. Stay up, stay up, stay up. There we go. So that was actually successful. There you go. That is a, that is a pretty good success. And it's 40 tons from here out. And, um, yeah, a couple of extra tons for those rockets. And, you know, this would be a viable launcher. So let's try uh, see if this will take off again. Ready? Nope. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now jettison everything. Make a big mess in the ground below. Yeah, that thing takes off again. Great. But I thought a little harder. And I noticed that um, that perhaps, or I, I hypothesized that perhaps if we moved the capsule backwards in the design, then uh, it would reduce the torque because what you'd be doing is moving the main driver of the, the turning force, the part that has the lowest aerodynamic force, you'd be moving it closer to the center of mass and thereby reducing the torque essentially. And hopefully then the torque from the spacecraft would be enough to counteract it. I also decided to count to include a bunch of parachutes in this test. Um, so let's see what happens here. So again, we're coming down really fast. I'm going to try and just kind of hold it vertical because vertical is the way we want to land. I mean, you know, in all these cases, you can ride the retrograde vi vector down if you're, you know, great. But once you mess it up, there's no way to recover. I prefer having a way to recover. So there we are. We're in the, the oh shit, we're going towards the ground. Can we recover? Well, let's fire the parachutes. Um, well, parachutes are maybe helping. It's not really clear. I'm going to try turning the other way. Um, nothing. So parachutes on their own aren't... Well, they're maybe providing enough torque, but yeah, maybe... There just seems to be more mass in the wrong place and too many parachutes. Now, perhaps the center of mass needs to be moved closer to the capsule was another possibility here. You see, I'm almost getting it up, but I think what's going to happen is we are going to fall apart as soon as the parachutes open. And we're getting very close. There we go. Oh, no, actually, we... Uh, got that open so it's much nicer on it i guess if we're closer to vertical when we were not so vertical it wasn't so good and yeah this should be another landing 41.6 tons this time again a whole lot less than the the other vehicle which we had intended to deliver to another planet we still have three engines on it and we are heading down. We're just going to hit the land button when we get close to the ground. There we go. Again. You see, we only burn the engines for a couple of seconds because that's all the velocity we need to kill. Oh, and the best bit is, with all these parachutes, you can uh, defend your spacecraft should any uh, extraterrestrials turn up in the la <laughs> as soon as you land. And verifying, yep, this will take off again. And, of course, drop more crap on extraterrestrials. Okay, so yeah, I figured, can I move the center of mass forwards? And yes, I can. What I did was I got rid of that giant engine, and I'm just going to rely on the aerospikes. I think that I do not need the torque. I do not need the extra control that it gives. And it might actually make it easier, because I can then stack further tanks needed for the interplanetary travel backwards off that and decouple them in, pro in order. So... 
you know, let's see if this works a little better. Let's see if by moving the central mass forwards, we reduce the torque enough to get some control. Down to 25 kilometers, kilometer per second, and there the parachutes go. And, well, it seems relatively controllable. In fact, it seems completely controllable at this point. Um, I'm just, yeah, just trying to let it. It's basically sitting there practically neutral. So we've essentially made this thing stable. Isn't that great? Isn't that brilliant? The parachutes will open. Um, if the parachutes destroy this, then the solution would be a quick burn just before they open. But hopefully this will make it through the parachute opening. And we'll find out in a moment, because we're down to below one kilometer. Eight, 100, 700, 600, 500, open! Nice! So there we are, and our natural velocity is 14 meters per second. We still need a landing burn on this. But uh, the nice thing is, yeah, we're only using a handful of parachutes now compared to some of those earlier designs. Yeah, we're using, well, we're using eight parachutes, so it's not terrible. And... uh the total vehicle mass is now down to 37.2 tons. That is going to be fabulous. That, that'll like totally sit atop any rocket. And look, oh man, we're burning too much fuel here landing, I think. <laughs> there we go, touchdown. And once again, let us defend this spacecraft from the extraterrestrials. Nice. And with that, we have solved our problems. It is time to take this vehicle to another planet. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.